President Obama announced today his first nominee to his second term cabinet. It has been 45 days now since the election. This is the president's first official nomination for his cabinet. Now, historically speaking, this is rather late. It's taken him longer than President Reagan after he was reelected, longer than President Bush after he was reelected, longer than President Clinton. But today, President Obama did it. He announced today that he wants Senator John Kerry to be his next Secretary of State to replace Hillary Clinton. One of the reasons we may have had this announcement today, as Andrea Mitchell pointed out today, is that the White House finally had the time to deal with this nomination only because Congress cleared the deck. When the Republicans in Congress all decided to give up and go home and, uh, go home and, and submarine their own speaker last night, that unexpectedly left some time for making announcements today. I'm very proud to announce my choice for America's next Secretary of State, John Kerry. He has earned the respect and trust of his Senate colleagues, Democrats and Republicans. I think it's fair to say that few individuals know as many presidents and prime ministers or grasp our foreign policies as firmly as John Kerry. And this makes him a perfect choice to guide American diplomacy in the years ahead. Now, Senate Republicans are not expected to oppose Senator Kerry's nomination. Republicans were the ones, in fact, who suggested that John Kerry be nominated in the first place, rather than U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice, who the Republicans did not want in the job and who they pressured into removing her name from consideration for the job. The John Kerry as Secretary of State announcement now ends speculation on who will fill that one seat in the president's cabinet. But, of course, it does set off immediately a new round of speculation about some other job questions, like, for example, who will become the senator from Massachusetts to replace John Kerry? who gets it on an interim basis, and then who goes on to run in the special election for that seat to hold it on a long-term basis. Everybody in Massachusetts now is saying that Republican Scott Brown will run on his party's side in the special election, but the Democratic side is not yet clear. And then the next White House personnel matter that rises immediately to the fore is who's going to be the Secretary of Defense? The person whose name has been floated this week is Chuck Hagel. Republicans are trying to stop his potential nomination, too, even though Chuck Hagel himself is a former Republican senator. They think he's not right-wing enough. Chuck Hagel does not just have critics on the right, though. On the left, there is rumbling that Democratic presidents should stop putting Republicans in the defense secretary job, like Bill Clinton did with William Cohen and President Obama already did once with Bob Gates. Marcos Melitzas at Daily Coast calls it the bizarre tradition of sorts where Democratic presidents suddenly act like Republicans are right that only they, Republicans, can run our national security affairs. So there is general criticism from the left that Democrats should stop bolstering the myth that Republicans are stronger on defense because they're Republicans and therefore only Republicans should run defense even when a Democrat is president. But there is also this one very specific criticism of Chuck Hagel individually. It's not a general criticism, it's about his record. Back when it was Mr. Hagel who had the power to confirm presidential nominees or deny them, back when he was a United States senator, Mr. Hagel stood in opposition to President Clinton's nominee to be the ambassador to Luxembourg, a man named James Hormel. Senator Hagel explained at the time that he was opposed to that nomination because Mr. Hormel is gay. He said to his hometown paper that ambassadors, quote, are representing America. They are representing our lifestyle, our values, our standards. And I think it is an inhibiting factor to be gay, openly, aggressively gay, like Mr. Hormel, to do an effective job. Chuck Hagel said that in 1998. Uh, today, he took it back releasing a statement to the Washington Post calling his own words back then insensitive, saying they did not reflect the totality of his views or his public record. He apologized to Mr. Hormel, and he apologized for saying it. He then said he supports, quote, open service, by which I think he means that he's not going to be a creep about don't ask, don't tell if he gets put in charge of the Pentagon, which has just gone through hell and high water to repeal the don't ask, don't tell policy. Thank you very much. We don't know if Chuck Hagel was sorry for his attack on Jim Hormel before that attack might have stopped him from getting the top job at the Pentagon. We don't know if that attack or anything else will stop him from getting the job. We don't even know if Chuck Hagel is the president's top choice to get nominated for that job. Seems like we only got the first nominee for President Obama's new cabinet today because of a meltdown in Congress last night. Let's hope that we don't have to wait for something quite that dramatic before we get the rest of his nominees, too.